Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Since very shortly after the launch and explosion of ChatGPT, AI builders have been extremely excited about AI agents. You might remember back around this time last year when things like AutoGPT and Baby AGI were capturing everyone's imagination. Simply put, the thing that has people excited about an AI agent future is that instead of using AI as a co-pilot, to crib the term that Microsoft has laid claim to, or an assistant, AI agents are capable of executing a strategy from end to end, including subtasks. To take a very banal example, instead of using AI-supported research to find the best deal on flights, but then booking them yourself, you would simply tell an agent to buy the best flight based on whatever criteria you had, and it would be able to actually do that. After the initial burst of hype and excitement around last April, May, the conversation ebbed again. There just wasn't all that much that agents could do yet, and frankly, it was just a quiet behind the scenes kind of building time. Certainly, there was no shortage of people working on these issues. Towards the end of the year, it became clear that it wasn't just going to be startups who were thinking about agents, but all of the big AI labs. Indeed, Sam Altman hinted at this at OpenAI's Dev Day last year, calling the custom GPTs their very, very first tiny baby steps towards that agent future. Well, The Information has this week done a report that serves as kind of a check-in on the state of the agent conversation. The piece is called To Unlock AI Spending, Microsoft, OpenAI, and Google Prep Agents. The gist of the piece is that as the big AI labs try to convince enterprises to spend more on AI, they're making a bet that agentic software is likely to pry open those wallets even better than what's available now. The information writes, Microsoft is making software to automate multiple actions such as creating, sending, and tracking a client invoice based on their order history, or rewriting an application's code in a different language and verifying that it works as intended. This is just one example that the piece gives. They continue, The features belong to a class of AI software known as agents, bots that can work towards a goal with minimal guidance from people. OpenAI, Google, and Facebook owner Meta Platforms are each developing their own versions of agents. It's part of the industry's broader effort to turn the excitement ChatGPT sparked 18 months ago into recurring revenue for a slew of companies that sell such technology. While AI chatbots have wowed the business world with their ability to generate realistic answers or suggest lines of code to a programmer, customers say software that automates harder tasks will be necessary to unlock more spending. So what are some of the other types of agents that they say these companies are working on? Well, they write, OpenAI is quietly designing computer-using agents that could take over a person's computer and operate different applications at the same time, such as transferring data from a document to a spreadsheet. OpenAI and Meta are also working on a second class of agents that can handle complex web-based tasks, such as creating an itinerary and booking travel accommodations based on it. The way that the information sums up different agent types includes computer-using agents, which we just discussed, something that could take over a user's computer, including moving the cursor and keyboard and using different applications. The sample task they give is autonomously conduct research across a user's file and online sources and compile a new presentation. A second type of agent they mention is multi-step application agents. The idea here is an agent that can carry out multiple step tasks within an application without human oversight between steps. So an example is something like Microsoft is apparently working on that could draft invoices for customers using data inside a company's sales software, then record and summarize customer payments. A third category of agents they call web-based task agents. As you might guess, these complete web-based tasks that require communicating with different applications, and a sample task could be researching and planning a user's vacation. Now, in terms of how these roll out, a lot of people seem to think that the right approach is very incremental. For example, again from this piece, instead of launching the most sophisticated form of agents, some companies like Microsoft are looking to launch ones that incrementally improve the automation features in current versions of its software. Earlier this year, Microsoft formed a new team under Scott Guthrie, Executive Vice President of Cloud and AI, to develop agent capabilities for the company's co-pilot products. An upcoming agent feature Microsoft is building within its Dynamics app for salespeople, for instance, aims to proactively suggest multi-step actions the app can take, actions that users previously would have needed to instruct Copilot to do. This incremental approach, I think, makes sense, as a big part of what was so disappointing to some last year was that when push came to shove, the agent softwares like AutoGPT really couldn't do all that much on their own. They needed a ton of human interaction and engagement. Given that, being extremely specific about these incremental tasks that agents can do that automate one specific type of workflow would seem to me to be a good wedge in while not overpromising. There are also technical advances that are potentially unlocking new agent use cases. One, according to Ion Stoica, a co-founder of AnyScale and Databricks, is that, quote, developers have collectively gotten better at using LLMs to generate synthetic data. That's especially helpful in code generation where developers can instruct models to create and then solve problems within a set of parameters. A second advancement is called grounding, the process of setting up AI models that can automatically verify whether another model's outputs are valid, such as by testing whether the code a model generated solved the problem at hand correctly. Stoica continued, In the coming year, we're going to see a significant jump in the model's ability for problem-solving and reasoning. This will hinge on grounding, 
If I can automatically verify that an output is valid, then I can use LLMs themselves to improve the outputs, which is huge. Now, from there, I wanted to share a post on X recently from Andrew Ng, the co-founder of Coursera and the former head of AI at Baidu and Google Brain. He writes about something similar, saying, multi-agent collaboration has emerged as a key AI agentic design pattern. Given a complex task like writing software, a multi-agent approach would break down the task into subtasks to be executed by different roles, such as a software engineer, product manager, designer, quality assurance engineer, and so on, and have different agents accomplish different subtasks. Different agents might be built by prompting one LLM, or if you prefer different LLMs, to carry out different tasks. For example, to build a software engineer agent, we might prompt the LLM, you are an expert in writing clear, efficient code, write code to perform the task, dot, dot, dot. It might seem counterintuitive that, although we are making multiple calls to the same LLM, we apply the programming abstraction of using multiple agents. I'd like to offer a few reasons. First, it works. Many teams are getting good results with this method, and there's nothing like results. Further ablation studies show that multiple agents give superior performance to a single agent. Next, even though some LLMs today can accept very long input contexts, for example, Gemini 1.5 Pro accepts 1 million tokens, their ability to truly understand long complex inputs is mixed. An agentic workflow in which the LLM is prompted to focus on one thing at a time can give better performance. By telling it when it should play software engineer, we can also specify what is important in that subtask. For example, the prompt above emphasized clear, efficient code, as opposed to, say, scalable and highly secure code. By decomposing the overall task into subtasks, we can optimize the subtasks better. Perhaps most important, the multi-agent design pattern gives us, as developers, a framework for breaking down complex tasks into subtasks. When writing code to run on a single CPU, we often break our program up into different processes or threats. This is a useful abstraction that lets us decompose a task, like implementing a web browser, into subtasks that are easier to code. I find thinking through multi-agent roles to be a useful abstraction. In many companies, managers routinely decide what roles to hire and then how to split complex projects, like writing a large piece of software or preparing a research report, into smaller tasks to assign to employees with different specialties. Using multiple agents is analogous. Each agent implements its own workflow, has its own memory, and may ask other agents for help. So given that that is theoretical, I thought it was also interesting that right around the same time, tech evangelist Robert Scoble retweeted a post from Taskade that shows this multi-agent approach being put into practice. The company writes, Introducing Taskade's multi-AI agents, now entering beta. Imagine one AI agent researching while another converts insights into tasks. They can write articles, perform research, summarize findings, and edit content all at once. Now, I haven't had a chance to see how Taskade works yet, and you can't really throw a rock at Silicon Valley right now without hitting an AI agent startup. But still, it's interesting that we're seeing some of this multi-agent approach go into practice. Other explorations in the AI space are also capturing attention. Zero X Thailand recently got X buzzing with a project he announced called Payman. Payman, he writes, is an AI agent tool that gives agents the ability to pay people for tasks they cannot do themselves. He continues... While many people imagine a future where humans pay AI agents for services they want completed, I believe that as AI agents become more advanced, they will be paying humans for tasks they can't do. There will always be important roles for humans, and as we move towards an agent-driven world, Payman's goal is to support a symbiotic relationship between AI agents and humans. So the idea here is exactly as he describes, giving agents who are coordinating a set of tasks the ability to coordinate humans as part of that larger picture. Now, one caveat to all of this comes from Pedro Domingos, who writes, the next big thing in AI is agents, except it's a decades-old idea with whole conferences dedicated to it. It always hits a wall of complexity and goes nowhere, and no one has explained what will be different this time. Now, I think there is a lot different this time in terms of technological capacity, in terms of the sheer amount of energy being poured into this, in terms of the number of different experiments, in terms of the specificity of experiments, but the caution is still well-received. Overall, it does seem very clear to me that the AI agent conversation is increasing, and it doesn't seem to me that it's just because, as the information posits, these big labs are looking for enterprises to spend more. In short, I think it's happening because AI agents are what's next. They're a seemingly obvious extension of some of the workflow automation and workflow reimagining that we've been doing with the assistant type tools we have now. It is not a foregone conclusion to me that every process will be agentized. And I certainly think that initially, the most success is going to be found with very discrete processes like we discussed earlier. But I am not cynical about what people are trying to build. I think we have a long way to go, but I think these things are going to be incredibly useful. And so I'm excited to see what people build next. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown. Until next time, peace.